two, one. Hi, everybody. Dean Chris back in the studio. Straight talk on leadership. This week's episode is going to be really what I believe is a, well, kind of a life changer in terms of leadership. It kind of provides the missing link, if you will, as to why sometimes as a leader, we're not really motivated or sometimes why we're more motivated than other times. But I do know that once I began to talk, to think about this, that it really made a big difference for me. And it kind of motivates me to do all the things I need to do as a leader. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I think you're going to get a lot out of this episode. Uh, it's going to be one of those that you're going to really look back and say, huh, you know, I really made me not thought about that, but I think it's very important. So as, as we always say, set back, turn up the volume, get ready to change your life. Okay. Awesome. All right. All right. Ready? Yep. All right. Here we go, Drew. Three, two, one. Hey, folks, Dean Chris back in the studio with you. Straight talk on leadership. It's been a great couple of weeks here for us at Leaders Helping Leaders Network at LHLN, as we like to say. Been really, really busy. Seems like the spring months has brought back folks to the classroom and where we had that COVID lull. It seems like we're just getting as busy as ever and doing as much as we can in the classroom. Got a lot of new things we're offering in the classroom, some new lessons, uh, some new things that we're teaching that are pretty exciting. Folks are telling us they're really changing their lives. Really glad to be doing that. Back out on the road, visiting with folks. Was in Jackson, Mississippi this week with a great number of leaders. You know what I really liked about this week was seeing the, the new people and the young people in the classroom. I don't know that I've had a classroom that had probably 75% iGens, meaning born kind of around the year 1990, 92, 93, 94, 95. Uh, those folks in the classroom, just new and new leaders. And man, it was so exciting to hear their viewpoints and uh, kind of see their hunger for knowledge and information about leadership. It kind of inspired me. I, re I really enjoyed it. So, you know, more on that later, awesome. but. I know. And so I'm joined uh, with me this week in the studio again is Kelly Corbin, who is the business development coordinator and director for Leaders Helping Leaders Network and Straight Talk on Leadership. And I really do appreciate you joining us again, Kelly. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for including me. I love this topic. I'm excited about it. Yeah. And this is one of those topics this week. We're going to be talking about something that a lot of people really don't think about when it comes to leadership, but I, but I swear to you that when I began to think about it a couple of months ago, and I kind of was just running around in my head, and you know how I am with stuff like that. I get to thinking about something. I'll find something that kind of just literally makes me think, all right, maybe if I thought about that, or if I did that, or how can I get better as a leader? What makes me more committed? Like, why... Do I have a desire, desire to do some things more than others? And why is leadership sometimes really difficult on some days and not so much on others? And, you know, I was just thinking about all those things. And I was like, what, what really keeps me consistent when it comes to performance of leadership? And I stumbled a, a, across this, literally was reading a couple of books that I've been kind of picking up and looking at. A couple of them, one of them is Simon Sinek's book, uh, Infinite Versus Finite or Finite Versus Infinite Game. Was reading a couple of books, reading John Gordon's book on the power of positive leader and just listening to podcasts. And it just was keeping my brain, you know, really on fire, if you will. And, you know, on uh, with at Leaders Helping Leaders Network, Kelly, we always talk about our brains on fire today or something. It's you know? true. Yeah, for sure. And you're such yeah, a content we have king a, anyway. Well, I don't know about being a content king, but I'm always constantly thinking about things that make sense to me in terms of leadership and trying to create these things that, you know, really will help people be the best versions of themselves. And, you know, it really just ha has struck me lately that we all got room to grow, but life seems to get in the way of our growth a lot of times. And a lot of times as leaders, we're just so busy. And I, and I have this thing that I'm saying a lot lately that we're just busy enough to be good, 
but we're way too busy to be great. And you know, that's, that's funny. We're, we're just busy enough to be good, but we're way, way too busy to be great. And that's I think so there's true. a lot of wisdom in that. Yeah. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that, that we just caught up and we get caught up in everything. And we always have these good intentions when it comes to leadership or when it comes to our personal growth. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves right back to doing the same things that we did yesterday and not really pushing ourselves. For sure. No question about it. I mean, I think that um, I love that quote that you have. I actually posted it in one of our um, apps that we have going on online um, because it's so true. I think it's a really easy trap to fall into is to is busyness in general Um, that, oh, I'm too busy to do that today. When really what we have to do is think about what our purpose is and what we're trying to accomplish that day. And, and, you know, as, as your director of operations, we're, we're still a small operation, but we're, we're growing every week. And I'm always looking for that better way to do things and how to, how to maximize the most of what I'm trying to do. And um, I'm really excited to hear you talk about the just cause today, because I think it's really what kind of, the more I thought about it over the last week, since you first introduced it to me, it's helped me kind of define that. I think that every powerful leadership expert that's been out there over the last 100 years from Dale Carnegie to you name it has talked about some form of this, but I think the way that you articulate it is really good. So I'm excited to hear you kind of just give us a good overview to start with, and then we'll kind of go from there. So what is just cause in leadership? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to get into that in just a second, but there's, there's a couple of things that I want to say that, Mm -hmm. you know, I've really been thinking about and and I was sitting around this morning and I was doing some reading and, and as you know, I was, I had texted you and contacted you about some new content that I'm working Mm -hmm. on as it relates to effort and commitment, because I do believe that that is just like one of the key things that, you know, and, and there's going to be more on that later. And I'm going to do not only a podcast, but the, a good portion of some of the classes that I'm doing coming up, I talk about this new effort and commitment thing that I've kind of thought about, about why do some leaders or why do some people do better than others? And why are some leaders better than others and those type of things? But I thought about a quote today and, and I, and I really, you know, it, it, it really struck me. So I'm going to run this quote by you here and I'll see what your thoughts are on it. But, but this is my quote I came up with today. Inside every leader is a better one. Everyone can get better. You know, and I think that is so true. Oh yeah. Inside of every leader is a better one. Mm -hmm. And you just have to find, how do I get in touch with that better one? You know, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and and I really believe leadership is one of those skill sets that the reason I love leadership so much and the reason I am so sold out on leadership is the fact that leadership is where you can take and you can be a common man or woman and do uncommon things through leadership. And, and, and I just there's nothing else in the world that gives you that ability to do uncommon things if you just get better at your leadership. And that is so, that is so crazy, but I really love that thought inside every leader is a better one. one. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. I really like that one. I think we're going to start adopting that in our business model somehow. That's going to be like our tagline inside every leader is a better one. (laughs) And so why we do it. And Kelly talks about, you know, the smallness of our business. And I really don't like it when she does that. And I hadn't really told her I don't like it, but I don't like it because it's smallness in numbers it means we ain't got a hundred employees, but we got a big mindset. We might oh, be no small in numbers, but the, way, yeah. but, but the way we think is <laughs> we large. Have big, big, big ideas. Yeah. yeah. No question. Well, we got big concepts. We have big concepts to back them up too. And that's what I like about what we have is we don't just go out here and repeat information that other people create. We do it ourselves and create content all the time and new stuff. We're not trying to steal everybody's stuff. We're trying to create new stuff that we see. So that's one of the things that I really like about us is that we're constantly pushing 
the envelope. And as you know, we've got this class going on right now, right in the middle of this virtual class we had started on Friday. We'll do our next session tomorrow. Yeah. 22 people. But it was there. really great. good. Yeah. It was really good. It was, it was really awesome. It really was. Uh, and this is the first time we've tried like an individual coaching virtually. And I thought it was really good. So if you don't have an opportunity or if you have, I know you're not in the class. If you listen to the podcast, you may be. And if you are, thank you very much. But look on our website. Look what we're offering. This course is on the virtual coaching and teaching course where I'm trying to help people become better teachers and coaches when it comes to leadership. So I really uh, want you to take a look at that. And uh, we're actually well, doing we'll four be offering sessions, it again. an hour and a half each. Yeah, we're yeah, going to offer offering it again. It again. Too. Mm-hmm. And uh, so take a look at it. I think it's a really good thing. So let's talk about just cause. All right, here we go. All right. So what is just cause? And Kelly asked that question and I really stumbled across this thing like, you know, a couple of uh, actually a couple of months ago when I was thinking about leadership, you know, if if you've been in a class with me or if you've heard me talk about leadership at any time, I think one of the key components of any leader is to understand what their why is. And my why is to inspire, to motivate, to educate. Uh, it's to help people live a purpose-driven life. And, and I really wanted to inform and inspire and to educate, to help people, motivate them and myself to live a purpose-driven life. And I think that why philosophically is just, you know, it really keeps me understanding why I do this. Why do I teach and why do I stay on the road and you know, if you really look at the dates that I'm on the road, I'm on the road quite a bit. Yes. But a lot of people ask me, let's say, well, how, how much do you teach and how much are you on the road? And my answer is always the same as much as I want to. Right. And what I really mean by that is, is I don't go out there and teach because I have to. I don't go out there and teach because somebody's making me do it. I don't go out there and teach because of any of the money that I might make, although we do get paid to teach. But I go out there and teach because I want to change lives. I want to help grow future leaders and I want to make everyone better. And when I started thinking about it, I thought, well, you know what, that is, that's kind of like a deeper thing than your why. And it's something that you kind of can really understand and connect to. And I started thinking about it and, and I thought, you know what, it's, it's a just cause. So why do you do that? So I was thinking about motivation with people. And when people don't have a cause that motivates them, then they have a tendency to not really be as determined or as driven to do it. And the just cause for me is the ability to believe in something bigger than you. Mm -hmm. It's that thing that you do that you will do when you don't want to do. It's that thing that makes you, Uh, excited about life. It's that thing that you're willing to sacrifice for. And, you know, we've talked quite a bit, Kelly, you and I, over the last several days about service, sacrifice and suffering and leadership. Yes. And, you know, when you, when you talk about leadership, there's one thing that comes into mind, it's sacrifice. You're going to sacrifice. And as long as I feel like I'm in service and as long as I feel like I'm working towards my just cause, then you know, I stay motivated. I stay happy. I stay really wanting to do it. And it's kind of funny the just cause. And when I say that's a cause, right? Any of you out there can have a cause. You got a cause you work for your organization is a cause, right. but you have to believe that that organization is a just cause, meaning that it's really for the benefit of people. It's something that's bigger than you. It benefits people in general. Now you can have a cause that would not be that great. And that's not a just cause. That's just a cause. But when I say just cause, I'm, a, I'm really literally mean something that's bigger than you, something you believe in and something that benefits people. And, and when you talk about just cause, it can be something small, but it can be something very, very large. And right. the one thing about just cause, it's like, I, I'll give people an example of just cause that you would understand, like serving your country is a just cause, like working at a police organization or a firefighter or a first responder or a nurse or something, believing that you're actually helping someone do 
or get better or to be better or to take care of someone that those are causes, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if you believe in that cause and it benefits, it's a just cause. It's like the flag. You know, I talked about that before, right? You know, when I, and all of you out there who are in the military or not even, you don't have to be in the military, but if I were to have a flag in my hand, I want you to take this visualization. If I were to have a flag and it was on a pole and I were to start leaning it towards the ground, like it was going to touch the ground, most of you would jump up and say, don't let that hit the ground. Don't let it hit the ground. Why? Because that represents a just cause. That's what just cause does to us is it literally gives us the motivation and the belief in something bigger than ourselves. And as a leader, I don't think people find their just cause. I, I don't think people really understand what their just cause is. When I, when I ask leaders this all the time, I say, what, why did you become a leader? And a lot of times they'll say, well, you know, I mean, it's the only way I can move up. It's the way I can get more money. It's the way I can do pension. Those are causes. Don't get me wrong. Right. Right. But they're, ex they're extrinsic causes and extrinsic causes are tangible things. There, and there's two types of motivation. There's extrinsic, which deals with things you can see. It motivates you because you want more money. You want a better status. You want a better car. You want a better office. You know, all those things are extrinsic motivators. Intrinsic motivators are things that make you feel good about what you're doing. They drive you internally. And the one thing about intrinsic motivators are they're very hard to describe. And the reason they're very hard to describe in the way they affect you is, is because the really the most important things in our life that matter the most to us or things that we have a kind of physical connection to and a, a, a not a, not a physical, let's see what I'm trying to say, the word, the physical connection to and a spiritual connection, connection to, or that feeling, that emotional connection to something. When you have a physical and emotional connection to something, it changes you. Like it's, it gives you the reason to do more than you normally would. Right. Isn't that what Simon Sinek refers to? I mean, I guess one thing that I know you talk a lot about in your classes is developing your why of leadership. And I think what would be helpful is to maybe differentiate between defining your why of leadership versus your just cause. Um, if there is one, or are they related, I guess would be my question to you. And then to Simon Sinek's point and what you were just saying on the physical realm, the, the reason why some of these things are so hard to define, like why you love somebody, why you have a, a connection to um, a particular pet or to a particular um, person are all kind of driven within your brain. I forget the exact part of that brain, but you probably do. Um, that it makes it very hard to explain and put into words because of that physical connection. Well, all right. Well, let's go first things first. Number one, the why is different than just cause. Yes. Your, your why is more of a philosophical understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. The cause is the reason you're trying to accomplish it. So it's okay. kind of like the just cause becomes, it's like my why would be to protect the country. The just cause will be believing in that country, you know, be believing in that cause and, and making that cause very worthy to mm -hmm. you. It, it, but your, your why literally is like, it's, it, it's like Chick-fil-A. Let's take Chick-fil-A, for example. Their why is to like transform the customer, I guess. But their just cause is to really make a difference in people's lives with the way they treat people, the sandwich they make, the quality of food they get, and the employees they work with. See, that, that all encompasses their why. But it's like the just cause is like the foundational component of our why. Got it. It's like what helps us build our why. The why is more of our execution philosophical of what we're trying to do. It The just cause is like the brick and mortar part of what we're trying to do when it comes to uh -huh. just cause. And a lot of people don't have that brick and mortar thing they can rally to. Now my why motivates me and it rallies me, but it's not the point of why I'm doing it. Like I told you before, I want to inspire to, to inform and to educate people, to help them live a purpose-driven life. 
But the reason for that is because it is great to live a purpose-driven life. The results mm -hmm. of the purpose-driven life is the just cause. So it's like, you know, like I'll say this, there's three things that absolutely, if you as a leader have these three connective things, you will be, I guarantee you, 95% better than every single leader that you work with. These three things, understanding your just cause, realizing what the why is that connects to that and having a purpose in life. If you have those three things, those are huge in every person's life. And a lot of people miss one of those three. Like they'll have a yeah. just cause. Like they think that working at, a, here's an example, like working for the police department and being a cop could be a just cause, but then they don't incorporate the why to it. Like, what are they literally trying to accomplish? You know, that's where the why and the just cause come into place. The organization and being a cop's a just cause, right? But only right. if you believe that or act on it. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? See, the just cause can be very static, but mm -hmm. the why and the purpose put the action to the just gotcha. cause, mm -hmm. right? And that's where it's just huge. I mean, it's just, I'll give you so, an example of a just cause. Yeah. Like a just yeah. cause would be as a leader, if you don't believe in your organization, and that's where a lot of people get their leadership goes downhill because they disconnect with their organization or, or the organization is run by people they don't like, or, you know, it's just a lot of problems with your organization. They don't like their team. I mean, just a lot of things going on, but you can still have a just cause with inside that organization that creates motivation and creates you to do your best. Like for example, my just cause with leadership has everything to do with my why, but it's the foundation of what my why is. It's to grow future leaders. Right. See that that's my foundational just cause. Like my why can help motivate me towards that. And it helps me connect to that. But the reality is my just cause is to grow future leaders. And you know that. And, right. and one of the things too, a people, a person could be, would be a servant leader. That's mm -hmm. a just cause, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and like understanding what, your legacy of leadership can be a just cause, like wanting to have a great legacy of leadership to where you're influencing people in a positive way is a just cause. Realizing right. you're a life changer is a just cause. Realizing you're an influencer in leadership is a just cause. So, so you mm -hmm. understand where I'm coming from? Sure, absolutely. With those just causes. And, and when people have those just causes, it motivates them way past their, uh, their pain point. That's the key. Having a just cause that in cooperation with your why can literally motivate you past your comfort zone. Right. Yeah. I that's like that. That's what leaders ought to be doing. Yeah. Is motivating themselves past their comfort zone. If you don't have a real just cause, then, you know, you literally kind of start settling for mediocrity and get into that level where I say about 40% is what you're giving at work. And uh, we'll talk about more of that later, but and, you know, you and I personally have seen it with leaders we've dealt with uh, here in the recent future or recent times. Uh, we've been involved with them outside of the, uh, you know, the classroom and and we've seen their their uh, we've seen their efforts kind of, you know, wane on some of the things we're doing. And it's not because they're bad people. It's not because they don't want to do right. It's just they have a just cause that's bigger somewhere else. Right. Could be religion, right. could be something, yeah. yeah, their kids, yeah. whatever the case whatever. is. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, kids. That's right. I mean, kids are a huge just cause. No question about it. You no, know, they're probably the biggest just cause ever. They'll motivate you in things that's crazy, but directing and growing them is part of the why. Well, okay, why am I doing this? To make them better citizens. Well, the just cause is to keep them safe, to make sure they're okay, to put them in an environment of nurturing, that, you know, believing in them. Those are just causes. So my question to you then is to help the average person out there, how would you go about really thinking about and, and writing about, I mean, we encourage journaling all the time, how, how they can, how they can identify that, that just cause, what, what are the, what are the signals? What are the keys to really understanding what their just cause is? Because I think a lot of people don't know that they don't have a direction. They don't know how to even think about what their direction is or what their just cause is. Well, and that, I mean, that's a good question. And, and just cause has to be simple. It has to be 
explainable. You, you have to really know kind of what you're trying to accomplish in a just cause. It has to be cognitive, which means it has to be identifiable. When, mm -hmm. when things are cognitive, they're identifiable. They're, you think about them. They're things that you can define. You know, it has to be cognitive and you define it. But it also has to be, when it's cognitive, it has to be effective too. Now, there's where a lot of people miss their just cause. And you were talking earlier about Simon Sinek talking about, you know, love and identifying the limbic, love. And I think it was stuff. the limbic area, isn't it? The brain that. Well, you have three parts of your brain. You have the neocortex, which is the kind of the outer part of the brain, which is where you think. You have the limbic system, which is in the center of the brain, which controls all emotion. And then you've got the base of the brain, which creates kind of the lizard part, which mm -hmm. means you breathe, you, you sweat, right. you blink your eyes. You don't, you don't have to think about those things. And it's kind of controlled by these three parts. And the, the center of our brain in, in way, uh, you know, regardless of what your religious beliefs are or not, but when it comes to uh, evolution, they think the portion of the brain that developed second was the emotional center because it kept people alive. Right. That's the part of the brain that reacts to stress. That's kind of part of the brain that sees threats immediately. That's kind of, but interestingly, that's the part of the brain where you feel the emotion love. That's where you feel the attraction, the connection, right. all those things from that center part of the brain. Uh, and that's one of the things if and a lot of our listeners out there won't remember this character, but some of you probably will Spock, you know, Spock had a very small limbic system, but a very huge neocortex which meant he was a great thinker, but he was not a philosopher. He could not think logic. Logic to him was facts. And right. when you get people that disconnect with their, their limbic system, they kind of become very logical. But yeah, and the interesting thing about though, and this is why a lot of people, you have to connect to your just cause emotionally, which means that it has to be bigger than you. It has to be something that you feel. It's not something that you can just identify. You have to feel it. That's why some people don't know what their just cause is, is because they're a little bit intimidated by how they feel. And I mean this with cops. The, the second cops start feeling something, they won't cut it off. You know, they don't want to connect to those emotions because they feel like if they're emotional, they feel weak. And so cops really don't like uh, identifying feelings. They, they really don't. And, and a lot of people in public service don't like that because right. a lot of times you're going to see things that you have to disconnect emotionally with, you know, and it's pretty easy to disconnect if you ain't thinking emotionally first, but if you're thinking emotionally, it's very difficult to disconnect. And so we, we, that's the limit system. So what I mean by is your just cause has to be effective is that you have to be able to feel it. In other words, it's like the flag. If I said, well, why don't you want to hit the ground, the flag to hit the ground? Well, you can tell me, well, it's just a flag. And I say, well, what do you mean by the flag? What, what is it about the flag that makes it so special? Well, people have died for it. Yeah, I understand that. Well, what makes that special? Well, by gosh, just serving your country and believing in something bigger than you will describe that. Most people can't describe that feeling because that part of the brain does not communicate with you. That part of the brain does not have the communicative ability to describe how it's feeling. Like if I were to say to you, if I were to say, and I, know, and I know you love your children dearly, if I were to say, well, describe what it feels like to love them, you'd have a hard time doing it. Right. You could say, right. well, I'd do anything for them. Well, that's a just cause. That's not right. a feeling. Or you, you know, or well, there's attributes jump. that you, that you enjoy, enjoy of them that, I mean, that would probably be the easiest way, but that doesn't really describe the, the feeling or the sensation that you have as a parent. Right. You, you can't feel that. Like when you fall in love with some first time, describe what that feeling is. Well, it's overwhelming. No, that's really not a descriptive word. That's just something that occurs. Describe it. It's really, really hard to do. And, and that's why a lot of people's shy away from understanding the just cause. They know what it is and they can feel it like every cop out there, whether you, whether they have ever thought about it or not, they're working towards a just cause because at any time they might have to give their life up in the line of duty. Right. That's a just cause. They're and, keeping community. We safe. don't understand. We don't understand just cause until we go to a funeral. And when yeah. you go to a cop funeral, you tend to understand just cause really clearly. 
you see all the pageantry, you see all the people there mourning, you see all the people doing all those things. You're like, oh my God, there's something bigger than this person that they were serving, right? That's a just you know, cause. And that, that reminds me so much. I, I saw a social media post from the Department of Public Safety in Texas, and one of their officers had been shot in the line of duty. And one of the spouses that was there was the right before the funeral. Um, it wasn't the spouse of the deceased, but another one. And she captured one of the most, I mean, you almost were brought to tears. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about. Literally, it was a hallway and all of these troopers, you know, Texas Rangers were lined up in the hallway and they were in full dress uniforms waiting for the orders to march out, you know, and it was just a really compelling thing that they would, they had probably 50, 60 of them all lined up in this hallway you know, one line facing the other and the emotion that that just evokes when you see that you just can see the, that's what you're talking about. That's the just cause right there. Oh yeah. I mean, that's very, I mean, they're, what the, they're not like, they're lined up to honor the officer. Absolutely. No doubt about it, but they're lined up in recognition of the just cause he gave his life for. Correct. I mean, absolutely. The service of the community, the service of people, all those things. So very, very good. I mean, that's what just cause is. And a lot of people need to identify their just cause. And it's a little more simpler than you think. It's just believing in something bigger than yourself. It's like the just cause of leadership. What is it? And that's what we're talking about today is you have to find one. Am I a servant leader? That's a just cause. Do Am I trying to grow future leaders and make them better than me? That's a just cause. Am I trying to leave the legacy of leadership to where this is this organization is better because I've been here? That's a just cause. And, and people don't have just causes. They, they tend to have rank. They tend to have standing. They tend to have positions. But when they connect with the just cause, they become different. And just cause creates motivators that go beyond your just normal motivation. They'll make you endure pain. They'll make you answer calls when you don't want to answer. They'll make you pick up the phone when you don't want to pick up the phone. They'll make you go out and visit people when you don't want to go. They'll, they'll drive you past what you normally would do because you believe in the just cause. And that's the thing that leadership, it keeps us to understanding, you know, the importance of leadership because honestly, leadership in itself is a just cause, but you have to give yourself direction on what that just cause is. Because the fact that just you ought to be a better leader, we're human beings, we have to have direction. So what am I being better at? You know, and I think that the more definable that is, the, the more, you know, that you're the better you are at it. It's just like this, you know, we, this is a Sunday afternoon and we're doing a podcast. Well, why are we doing a podcast on Sunday afternoon <laughs> is because we want our listeners lives to change and we want people to continually listen to push themselves to get better. We're not doing it just to hear ourselves talk. No, I mean, right. I'd rather be watching the masters. I'd rather be outside. It's beautiful today. I'd rather be doing something else, but we believe in a just cause. It's just like you, you know, you know, you just doing this podcast with me because you believe in the message and the things we're trying to accomplish. Well, I think that you asked me is that what question. motivates you. Yeah, no, that, I mean, you asked me that question last week and I told you that my just cause in working with you at LHLN and, and helping you and, and, doing all that. And I can tell you my why as well, but the just cause is that I want to see the profession of law enforcement have its nobility reestablished. I really want it to be seen as a noble profession and every man and woman that serves in the uniform to be perceived as the leaders that we know that they can be. And that's what I feel like we try to do here at LHLN. I support you. And my why is to basically provide the infrastructure and inspiration and information that you need so that you can go out and inspire these people to be the best leaders they can be. And you can see that in your effort and commitment. It's, it's just, it's like you, you really, a lot of leaders try to get people to do things and they, they get results oriented and they forget that people have to have a just cause to be really, to really get things done. You know, they yes. just don't do it because all of a sudden you tell them, let's do it. They really have to understand what the just well, cause is. And when I think that's hard. It, do Don't you think that's hard for a lot of people to help uh, um, their followers find that intrinsic motivation? It, it just seems like a lot of hard work. It's probably what a lot of people out there would say. What would you answer to, answer to that? I'd say it's not hard work at all. 
it's actually the easiest thing you'll do. And the reason I say that is, is because you, the hardest thing to do is convince people to believe in something they don't believe in. Yeah, the easiest sure. thing to do is convince is to convince people to do something they believe in. And you know where it starts believing in you, because if you as the leader, people believe in you, then they will follow where you're going. That's the key component of this just cause is the reason you should have a just cause is because then the people believe that you believe in something bigger than, than you and them. The right. problem is, is most of these people think you're just doing something because the chief said it or the captain <laughs> said it or the, or it's in the, you know, it's this or that or whatever. Uh, when people believe in you, it creates a belief in just cause. I actually think that we over complicate leadership because we don't really pass along the first element of leadership, which is getting people to believe that we care about them. When people believe you care about them, they look at it differently. When they don't, they don't. Yeah. Just that's pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's a very no, difficult I agree. thing. I like that. And the biggest thing with law enforcement people is, is that we do have relationships with other people and we do, but we always have these barriers of emotional connectivity because we've cut that switch off to begin with. And we don't like to be perceived as touchy feely emotional. Right. So it comes across that we believe that when people think that we're not as effective as a leader. So anyway, I mean, you know, there's no easy answers, I'm sure, but no, I think you know, that's a great first foray into this. I think the just cause thing is, is I love that the way that you explained that is the bigger purpose and that the why is, is putting the bricks and mortar to that. Um, and I hope that I think it gives everyone in our audience something to really think about. If you don't have a just cause, you need to find one. If you don't know what that is, email us at lhln.org, uh, me or Kelly, we'll help you find your just cause. And, uh, you know, I'd really like to have some of our listeners email us and tell us what their thoughts is on this episode about Just Cause. It's extremely important to us to know that we're hitting content that you like to hear. Uh, when we do these content, you know, Kelly, that I don't do content, just drag it out of the sky and let people, you know, produce it. No. I, li I got to feel it. I got to, I got to make sure that I'm really feel good about it, that I think it's a life changer. And you're constantly pushing me when, you know, when we're going to do this, I'm like, look, I got to feel it. I can't just go out here and then do it because no, I want to be a producer of content. So, I mean, well, and, and, you know, and that's, and, I guess that's a, a good and a bad thing. Right. Well, and I think it's got to meet my just calls. It has to meet my just calls, my right. just calls threshold, you know, but we would encourage our audience. Please let us know if you've got ideas or, or issues or topics, you know, send them to us. If, if Dean, if it, if it resonates with Dean, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to, to jump on and talk about it. If you've got suggested guests um, that meet his just cause or, or, or of interest to him, then yeah, share those with us. You can email me, you can email him, um, just submit it on our website. We're, we're happy to hear. And, and yeah, and we, we welcome them on the show. I mean, you know Absolutely. what, we're, we're looking forward to getting them on the show and you know, doing all those things. And, and, and I think that they have to understand too, another just cause. And I just thought of it while we're saying is adding value to people's lives is a just cause. Absolutely. Those things, the just cause does not have to be complicated. It just has to be something you truly believe in and something you're willing to sacrifice for. And uh, that's it. I mean, just cause. So, you know what, Kelly, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out today to help me with the podcast. Hope our yep. listeners have enjoyed just calls. Uh, we really hope that you'll look, take a look at us at LHLN and we'll hope that you take a look at our new book called essential leadership lessons from the thin blue line. Uh, it's okay. a bestseller, which I, which I never thought that we would, I would ever be able to say that I had a bestseller, but the only reason I have a bestseller is because people like you out there listening to this podcast, bought the book. Thank you. Look at our schedule. Hope you'll I hope see you in the classroom. Our classrooms are ever changing. If you come to a classroom, I promise you, if you come to a classroom today and you take a, a class, you come back two weeks later, you'll see some different information. I am constantly pushing the message of leadership, pushing Absolutely. forward on how to do it better, finding new ways, finding innovative ways of connectivity, finding innovative, innovative ways of making the classroom experience exciting, making the classroom experience something that you just can't wait to talk about. And so with that being said, folks, I appreciate you. Thank you. 
God bless you. Until next time, I'm Dean Crisp. Okay. Well done. There we go.